Hi, this is Jeff Hund with HPE with another installment of Redfish School. This one is on the events and message changes that were part of the 2018.2 release. Uh, note this video assumes you've seen that first Redfish events and messages video, so if you haven't watched that, please go look at it. Uh, I'm going to go over briefly the changes in 2018.2 and then an example of clearing logic, which was one of those changes. The changes around the Redfish message uh, that came about in 2018.2 uh, are all here on this page in brief. I'm going to go over them in detail. We changed the subscription model. We, we're deprecating an event type in favor of uh, registry prefixes and resource, resource types. We've come up with a grouping mechanism. We've added telemetry support, and so you can get event uh, metric reports, and you'll have to watch the telemetry video when we do it um, for, for how to set up metric reports, um, but you can get those across the stream. Uh, we've added SSE in a previous version, and so we've come up with a way of filtering messages across the um, server-side events. Uh, we've come up with some new registry properties and then some new message registries uh, as well. And then we've clarified the rules about how OEMs extend and modify uh, uh, DMTF standard registries. So first of all, the subscription model changed. Um, event type has been deprecated. That means uh, it's not going away right away. It, it means in a future version, if we ever go to 2.0, we'll get rid of it completely. But we found it a very confusing way of doing things because the, the enums in it were only alert and then status changed and then three of them for which were kind of mirrors to the SIM lifecycle event. And it wasn't really a clear match for a registry approach. Uh, which is kind of the way we're going for you didn't know what, what's an alert type and what were the messages for the other one how did how was all that supposed to work so um, a lot of vendors went ahead and created their own message registries and that's fine vendor message, message registries are accommodated as part of the model but it became more clear that um, if you wanted to subscribe to specific registry prefixes and specific resource types, um, that made a lot more sense. So we added a registry prefix that you could subscribe to, and it's enumerated in the service. Um, the value doesn't include the version, um, but uh, uh, you can find the version when you get an event. Uh, and of course, you can go uh, to the registries collection to, to find it out, but to find out what versions are in that implementation. But um, if registry prefixes is empty on subscription, uh, then the client is subscribing to all the message registries that are available in the implementation. So, if, you know, if we come up with one, there's there's one called tasks, and if you don't care about tasks, you don't don't uh, subscribe to the task collection. So, um, and then there's resource type. This is the schema name and class, right? So, um, Ethernet interface or or task itself or or any of those other specific resources, you can list them all out. Um, the implementation will have a list of those. It's in the service. Um, and then you can fill in the resource type on your subscription. Say, look, I only care about network device functions. I don't care about anything else. So you can subscribe to those uh, specific events on any particular um, um, subscription, provided the implementation supports that. So, And then we added a Boolean for subordinate resources. Um, we had the origin resources in the original model where you could um, subscribe to a resource, you know, put in the URI, but it meant you had to fill out any current and future URI. Let's say you were doing a, a, a disk subsystem, right? Well, you'd have to do the storage URI and all the disk URIs and all the volume URIs. Well, what if you created another volume? Do you go back and resubscribe? It didn't work real well, and so you had to put all those URIs in there, and it's just easier to make a Boolean and say, I care about this storage resource and everything under it. So all the subordinate resources are can be subscribed to just by setting a flag. We added event group ID to the message. Um, you know, that we, we found ourselves in the circumstance where um, you could get a resource change message and then a status change message and a land disconnect message all from the same underlying event. And how do you know there were three different events? How do you know it wasn't just the same event generating three different messages? Well, that's what event group ID is for. It'll have the same value for all three messages if they all really come from the exact same event. We enabled telemetry events. Uh, we added a property called event format type on event destination and event service. And uh, right now it's just an enum with event or metric report because it's the only two things out there. Um, and so when you subscribe, you set your event format type to either be event or metric report. So 
it's a good way of subscribing and being very clear what you want as far as the payload coming over the wire back to the client once you subscribe. We also allow query strings on server sent event URI for SSE. It's optional to support, but those query strings are in there and in the model and you can find them out um, using the SSE filter property supported on the service to find out exactly which properties are supported. And these are the exact same filter options that are in the Redfish uh, one uh, Redfish spec itself so that you can um, um, use the same format, whether you're doing a, a get and filtering on gets or, or you're filtering on events. We modified the message schema to add clearing logic. Uh, we didn't really have an assert, deassert kind of model in there. So you could have a, a message come in. Well, how do you know when that condition ever gets cleared? If you're a GUI trying to change color from you know, like you know green to red and back to green, how do you know when a message clears a previous message? And so we added this logic inside of the uh, message registries, inside of each message in the registry itself. Um, there's one called clear as if, and that's um, um, there's a clearing logic object in there with a property in there called clear as if, and if it says same origin of condition, then you know, gee, if the origin of condition um, property is the exact same string on the next message, you, you know it was clear it. And so uh, um, clears message tells you which message this one clears. And then we added a clears all Boolean because really, you know, if you reset a device, um, that clears all previous conditions. So um, it, it was almost impossible to say, well, this clears this and this and this and this. So we just said, you know what, it clears all. And, and, and if clears if is set to same origin of condition, then, you know, reset device clears all previous message if same origin of condition. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Um, so here's a clearing logic example. Um, there's two messages in this registry. There's resource errors detected and resource errors corrected. And resource errors corrected has a clearing logic section that says, you know, this clears the message resource errors detected if it's got the same origin of condition. Redfish has two new standard message registries in 2018.2. Uh, in, in uh, we hope to add more over time. Um, they were submitted to the DMTF from STIA and published with modifications to match all these 2018.2 changes, but they, uh, they are out with the 2018.2 release. Um, one of these is, you know, I, I kind of group them this way, but, but it's just my grouping. There's actually no official grouping in the message registry itself. So we do have those kind of resource lifecycle kind of messages where the resource was created, removed, or changed, um, or the URI for the resource changed specifically. This used to be at a one URI, and now it's at another one if the service knows it. Um, error kind of thing where resource errors were detected or corrected, a threshold was exceeded or cleared. Warning where a warning threshold exceeded or cleared. Status where the status was uh, changed for OK, or warning or critical. Um, Self-test failed or completed, license expired, changed or added, and then kind of a miscellaneous resource version was incompatible um, kind of event. So um, that's the resource message registry. We may add a few more to it, but it's meant to be kind of generic and not specific, like a like a network device function registry or a storage registry or or you know some one of the more uh, a service oriented registries that we hope to develop. We also developed a task registry. Um, again, this one came in from SNEA as well, and we, we modified it to match 2018.2. It's what you'd expect, right? Events that say the task was started, the task was completed, okay, warning, uh, aborted, canceled, the task was removed, paused, resumed, or task progress changed. Finally, um, how does an OEM extend a message? Um, we realized that, that there were some OEMs that wanted to extend messages. You can always override a message by including the message body in the event itself coming back. But you shouldn't really use a, a message arg or a message ID if you do that. OEMs can't change uh, standard registries, but there are OEM sections inside of every event and inside of every message in a message registry. And so you can extend it inside of that. And so 
we, we figured out a couple other things beyond that. Look, because there could be an OEM section in an event, there's no need to use message args beyond the last one in the registry. So if the registry says there's two args, it's invalid to come back with three arguments. Um, can an OEM use a substitute registry? You can, you just can't substitute any of the standard messages in a DMTF message registry. So if you're claiming to be uh, task 1.0, whatever, um, you can add OEM sections inside of the, each of those messages and publish it on your implementation or on your website. You just can't go in and modify the text in so, that the DMTF copyrighted and published. Um, so um, that, that was uh, the enhancements to the rules around how OEMs extend messages. Of course, you can always do an OEM registry, just can't claim to be a standard DMTF one. Those are the changes in the 2018.2 release. Again, thank you for watching uh, this installment of the Redfish series. And uh, if you have any questions, please visit the developer app.